Today we're taking Kevin Durant's career and putting it in reverse, which means he'll be starting off with the Suns as a rookie, then moving on to the Nets, Warriors, Thunder, and finally the Seattle Sonics to close out his time in the league. NBA history as we know it will be completely changed, as he's starting off playing with a former MVP in Steve Nash. And with the Suns winning 61 games the prior season, the game is extremely easy for KD. For now. Because as part of his backwards NBA journey, he's not staying with the Suns for long and is being traded to the New Jersey Nets. And while the Suns would continue dominating, making it into the playoffs, KD would be struggling to win games, only finishing with 37, missing out on the playoffs. KD's obviously not the problem, the real problem are his teammates. And at this point, the only notable teammate he has would be Vince Carter, who's still good but on the wrong side of 30, which means KD has to carry the team. And that would result in him blowing up to 28 points per game only at the age of 20. And with the keys, to the offense, the Nets would make a drastic improvement, winning seven more games to hit 44 to make it into the playoffs. Only to get eliminated first round. He passes it over to Swaggy P. Swaggy P with the three. He misses it. Offensive rebound layup and one. Yup. All right, man. Which now concludes KD's second season in the league. And since he's played four years with the Nets in real life, it means he only has two seasons left with the team until he eventually leaves for Golden State. Hopefully when he gets there, it'll be a little easier for him because right now it's a major struggle. Because we all know in real life he's played with many future Hall of Famers, but because his career has been reversed, his supporting cast looks extremely different. As in real life, the 2010 Nets won a comically low 12 games the entire season. And because of that, while KD would put up an MVP-worthy 32 points per game, the Nets would only finish with 41 wins, actually losing more games than the previous season. And the pain doesn't end there, because KD would run into the notorious Celtics super team in the playoffs, who would dominate their way to eventual 3-0 lead. In his first two playoff appearances, KD's playoff record is standing at one win and seven losses. He's about to get swept. He's actually about to get swept at home as well, which is what eventually happened as the Celtics would close him out in front of the five fans who attend Nets games, making it a third straight underwhelming season for KD. Everyone knows how good he is, but his ability to actually win games is being put seriously into question. And now entering the 2011 season, he only has one year left with the team before he leaves. However, there's finally some hope. As the Nets would make a trade for all-star Darren Williams, one of the best point guards in the league, who's averaging a 20-point double-double. It's the best teammate Katie's had since joining the team, and it would go a long way as the Nets finally seemed like they could contend for a title, winning 58 games, finishing as a second seed, and eventually dismantling Philly in the first round. Katie's finally seeing some team success, but at the same time, the stakes are being raised, as he's now going to be competing with some of the best players in the league, starting with Derrick Rose out in Chicago. Both he and KD have opposite play styles, but they seem to be evenly matched. But eventually, it would be D-Rose pulling away in Game 5, making it a 3-2 series. KD's now one loss away from not just being sent home, but sent to another team. And if he loses here, his Nets tenure is basically a failure. But with Game 6, there was some hope he could extend it to 7, as he would keep it close with D-Rose the entire way. But there's a reason the Bulls are up in the series, as D-Rose is dominating as well, leading to a tie game with 30 seconds left. It just so happens that the Nets have the ball here, which means Katie's clutch is being put to the test with his season on the lawn. If he wins here, he forces game seven. If he doesn't win here, he does not force game seven. He's going home. Katie with the ball. Katie being guarded by Luol Tang drives into a crowd takes a really like awful awful shot which now leaves the bulls with 16 seconds left with a chance to win the game and it's almost a guarantee that d rose is taking the final shot d rose is about to end it here we go eight seconds left they clear out for him somebody should probably someone yeah bro someone should probably it's too late some someone the nets defense was so bad i forgot how to speak english and now they're down two and 1.6 left on the clock which would wind up being KD's final possession with the team. And they're doing absolutely nothing. That's the shot. That's the shot they take. That's that's the shot they take. Which means just like in real life, KD's leaving the Nets with no titles. And since his destinations have been reversed, he'll be heading to Oakland to pair up with Steph Curry and the Warriors. But it's far from the super team we all know. Because KD's joining the team four years early. Which brings up the question, can he win before they become that super team? Because his first season would be far from easy. As while they would finish as a four seed and defeat Denver in the first round, KD's running into his toughest opponent yet, that being Kobe Bryant out in LA. It's only the second round, but the Warriors have a serious uphill battle, and it's not going to be solved in one season, as Kobe would take not one, not two, but three straight games to go up 3-0 in the series. And while I'd like to say KD would make the comeback, he's ultimately getting swept in his first season with the team. Not really going anywhere with the ball, driving to the basket. Wild layup, he misses it, and that's it, all right. 
which officially closes the door on KD's first season with the Warriors. And since he's only played three seasons with them in real life, he only has two more left. It's safe to say his time with the team has gone off to a rough start, and worst of all, KD haters look like they're right as he can't win without a super team so far. But he would get one step closer to proving them all wrong, leading the Warriors to the first seed and another first round win. It looks like they're poised to make a serious run for the first time. Just a slam into another brick wall, that being Damian Lillard and the Blazers. It's unclear as to why they're losing since they're literally the fifth seed, but it doesn't matter, because KD's going down 3-1. to one. It makes no sense why the Warriors should be down right now, but whether it makes sense or not doesn't matter at all, because while KD would steal one more game, he would shockingly be sent home, at home, at the hands of Damian Lillard. Either KD is choking terribly, or Dame is like the best point guard of all time. It's probably the first option, which now means that KD has completely wasted his first two seasons in the Bay with only one left. It might be a classic case of bad timing as he'll be leaving the team one season before they start to win chips in real life. And while him and Steph are a solid duo, before they know it, they'll be competing against each other. But for now, they're teammates and have one last shot to get something done. So for the 2014 season, as usual, KD's averaging his 30 points per game and is leading the Warriors to 61 wins. Not only that, but he's also setting up the team for success in the postseason, as while they would match up with the real-life champion Spurs, he would lead the Warriors to a 3-1 lead. But don't forget about Steph's contributions, because the Warriors are far from a one-man show. It looks like Steph's gonna have the play, the ball in his hands for the final possession. He's running around the court, they clear out for him, behind the back, between the legs, he's not- Oh my god, he's missing that. Oh my god! The duo of Steph and KD are having their best playoffs yet and are heading to the conference finals. It's the farthest that KD's gone and now he needs just four more wins to make it out of the West. But in order to get there, he'll have to take down the Lob City Clippers and Chris Paul, someone who he'll be sharing the court with later as teammates. But for now, we'd have a serious back and forth between the two teams with KD standing out scoring by far the most points. However, it's a team game and because he's on the Warriors earlier than usual, they don't have the same playoff experience that propelled them to multiple titles in real life. So while they would keep it close, they would be falling down 3-2 in the series. It's eerily similar as to when KD was on the Nets, as not only is he one loss away from elimination, but for the second time, his clutch is being put to the test with his season on the line. They're about to feed KD in the post, being guarded by Jamal Crawford if he smokes a layup. Okay, 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 we're going to game seven. Unlike the last time KD was tasked with taking the final shot, he came through for his team and is now one win away from making it to the finals. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Chris Paul with the headband, for some reason he misses it, we're going to game seven. Now he has to head to LA for one more game and try to silence a hostile crowd. He has all the momentum in the world. He might be closing out his time in the Bay with a title. But all that was for absolutely no reason, because the Clippers would control the game from the opening tip, ending KD's time with the team in embarrassing fashion. Nice, and very fittingly, KD's dribbling it out, which means he's finishing with no championships. It would have been cool to see him take home a title to the Bay without the super team, but much to my absolute shock, he couldn't get it done. Now he's saying goodbye to sunny California and heading to Oklahoma City, but once again, since his career has been reversed, he'll wind up playing with several different stars he wouldn't have normally played with over the course of his time with the team. But it all starts with the 2015 season where he'll get his chance at redemption with none other than Russell Westbrook. The two are meeting up late, but are already one of the most exciting duos we've ever seen with the shooting of KD Kevin Durant from deep. and the absolute power of Russ. There it is, that nuclear athleticism from Russell Westbrook. But while some things stayed the same with KD winning MVP, the two wouldn't do much for their first few seasons playoff-wise, especially in the 2016 season where they'd find themselves losing to the Rockets in double overtime. Bro, they didn't even get the rebound. What just happened? Which leads us to the 2017 season where history is changing dramatically. Because while in real life, Katie's leaving for Golden State, he's staying with the Thunder no matter what until the 2023 season. And still with zero titles, we're going to see if he could surpass the two that he won in real life. One immediate consequence of KD saying is while he's still elite, Russ doesn't average a triple-double or win MVP, but the two would most importantly win way more games than in the actual NBA, catapulting up to 61, storming through the Suns with D-Book in the first round and the Pelicans with an AD in the second to make it to the conference finals. 
just to get sent home by none other than Steph Curry and the Golden State Warriors, preventing the Thunder from making their first finals appearance. KD and Russ aren't playing bad at all, but it's just not working out as the Splash Bros were too much. And worst of all, this might prove that the 2017 Warriors didn't need KD after all. So, you know, you could do whatever you want with that information, man. Right now, he still has no championships. And after the Warriors would go into Atlanta and win the title, it's clear that KD might need some more help to solidify his place in NBA history. And it would be on the way. The OKC Thunder are now stacked featuring four future Hall of Famers, it might be the best team ever assembled, as the team would dominate on unprecedented levels, winning a record 74 games, making them the most obvious favorites to win the chip. Cause a team this dominant is honestly completely unfair, as they would absolutely destroy everyone in the Western Conference playoffs to make it to KD's first finals. And while they're kind of bailed out by the fact they're not playing LeBron with it somehow being Philly instead, it probably wouldn't have made that much of a difference, as the Thunder are too good. KD of course will lead the way is the best player on the team and is now seconds away from his first title. But even then, there's always a catch. I know the comments are about to flame KD because he is winning a title, but also he's on a super team. But at the end of the day, it counts. He finally has his first title, and when you combine it with the 74 wins, they seem destined for greatness. Or at least it did, until the 2019 season, as the Thunder would fall off a little bit. It's unclear as to why, as they still have the trio of Russ, PG, and KD, but it seems like they lost a step because they would plummet from 74 wins down to only 72, of course storming through the playoffs to make it back to the finals again. This time they're up against the real life MVP Giannis and the Bucks, and just like last season, they would make sure everyone knew that they were the better team going up 3-2 in the series. Katie's on the brink of his second title, which will tie him up with his real life total. However, the series isn't over yet, and Giannis was the MVP for a reason, as he would pose a serious threat in Game 6, which was also played on his home court, leading to only a 3-point game with 1 minute left. If the Thunder lose this one, it's going to Game 7, and we all know anything can happen there. We have a 3-point game, about a minute left. Will Giannis force Game 7? He's being guarded by Paul George, spins off and passes out of it. He should have dunked it. Did Giannis just pull a Ben Simmons? In the middle of the finals, the pass down to Middleton. Okay, they're still alive. All right, here we go. Russ, Russ, Russ turns it over. Is that Patrick Patterson on him? Oh my God, yeah, please double him. The pass over, the pass over. He missed. Jabari Parker with the rebound. Oh, that's a dunk. Oh my God, we might, we might, we might actually go to game seven. Raymond Felton with the ball. Raymond Felton about to pass it down to Russ. So it's not gonna be PG. It's not going to be KD. Russ with the step back. He makes it off the glass, off the glass. Here we go, 23 seconds left. This could be KD's second title if they get a stop. They pass it out to Giannis. I would be very shocked if he didn't take the last shot. They clear out for him. He almost drops the ball on the ice. So Patrick Patterson playing the defense of his life. The triple team. He pat. oh my God, Giannis keeps passing it out. Why does he keep passing it out? Chris Middleton with the ball being guarded by, oh my God, Brogdon for three, he might hit that. Oh my God. That shot by Brogdon could have changed the course of NBA history forever, but ultimately one unlucky bounce decided the game and the series giving KD his second title, tying him with his real life total. But as he lifted up the finals MVP, it was clear that these relatively easy runs are over. Cause Russell Westbrook would be leaving the Thunder to play with his childhood friend in James Harden, and Paul George would be heading home to LA, leaving KD with a drastically different roster than he's used to. Now being paired up with Chris Paul, who eliminated him earlier, and Shea Gilgis Alexander, who's a good young player, but still a few seasons away from true stardom. And while the Thunder would be very good in the regular season, they're falling off for real this time in the playoffs, getting dropped off by the Lakers, featuring LeBron and AD, not making it much of a contest, being sent home in five. Not in the bubble now, so no one can say it's fake. And as LeBron would be heading to the finals, Chris Paul would be plotting his next move, ditching the Thunder for the Suns in the offseason, leaving KD with a young team and no All-Stars. And with a team this bad, there's only one thing to do, which is bring on the tank. So for the next two seasons, KD would be taking it easy, doing everything other than basketball. And after a few years of tanking resulting in the drafting of Chet Holmgren and the development of Shea, KD's ready to focus 100% on basketball for the 2023 season, which is the final that we'll be watching and will be played out in Seattle as a member of the Sonics. 
And of course, with a more developed team and the return of a motivated KD, the Sonics would have a fantastic season winning 57 games. And while they'd only finish as a second seed, you wouldn't even be able to tell. Cause in the playoffs, KD would be eliminating his former team and the number one seeded Warriors to make it out the West. Officially returning to the finals to challenge the Boston Celtics as his final opponent. We're about to find out if he could lead a franchise to a title without a super team. And with that said, the series would get off to a hot start with the two teams alternating wins and losses to make it a 2-2 tie heading back to Boston for Game 5. It's the most crucial game of the series as usually whoever wins this game brings home the title. And since the Celtics are the younger team and Katie's 34 years old, there's infinitely more pressure on him to win this game. But while he's playing well individually, the Celtics have a more developed team overall, taking control at home despite Katie's dominance, putting him down 3-2 in the series. It's safe to say his legacy is on the line. Who knows what's in store for him if he loses, the criticism might be unbearable. The only thing he can do though, is take it one game at a time, which starts with game 6. But of course after a little while the problem's starting to show, as while he's not struggling to score, it's not more than Boston, who's putting up an impressive performance on the road. And with a lack of help from his teammates, the Sonics are in a rough spot, being down 6 with 2 minutes left. And I'll just let the rest of the game speak for itself. If KD winds up losing, he's not beating the super team allegations. Oh my god, Shea stepped out of bounds. He's done. They're about to pass it over to Jalen Brown. Oh my god, horrible defense. They gave up a layup that easy right now. And to cap off this absolute disaster, it would be a very familiar face heading to the line with a chance to ice the game. Oh my god, bro. They're about to be sent home by Brogdon. Brogdon missed that three earlier on the Bucks. He missed a free throw. The game's probably over though. KD's really being eliminated at the hands of Malcolm Brogdon. Shea with the worst shot you've ever seen. He misses it. They get the rebound. And they miss it again. All right, there we go. KD can't win without a super team. It's confirmed. And as Jason Tatum would raise the finals MVP trophy, KD would be taking his lead. He still has more seasons to play in real life, but for now we've hit the cutoff point, finishing with the same two titles he won in the actual NBA. But how will LeBron's career be affected if he went through the same process? Starting off in LA as a rookie with Kobe, then moving on to Cleveland at the very end. Click the video on the screen to see how many titles he would win if his career was reversed as well.